Klopp, after what happened on Thursday night, board, he said, we, we lost the plot a bit, zero positives. Uh, we were everywhere and also nowhere. C can you put your finger on why it was such a substandard performance? I think you've got to give a lot of uh, credit to Atalanta. I mean, I think the way they came um, over to Liverpool and went about them, uh, man for man all over the pitch, matched them, had runners running off them. Um, and it's something that Liverpool are not used to. Um, you know, you think a lot of the, the teams in the, in the Premier League will sit in and, you know, allow Liverpool to have the ball and then try and hit on the counter attack. It wasn't the same. I mean, Atalanta had a go at them. And, um, he, yeah, I mean, you, you look at Liverpool and I know we're, we're near the end of the season, but you still think to yourself, does Jurgen Klopp know his strongest team? And that's not down to him. It's like, there's been injuries, yes, but some people have, have had, you know, they've had five, six good weeks where they've been excellent, and you're like, right, that he's in my team, and then all of a sudden he drops off it, and somebody else comes in. And yeah, you could say it's a, it's um, you know the strength of the squad. I get that. But when you go back to Liverpool when they were firing all cylinders, you knew they're eleven. You knew what team was going out there on the pitch and they were going to get results. As Clinton said, as, as Mel said, it's been a bad week for them, but they'll respond. They'll get the three points today. And is the worry, Sue, that when you look at City, they appear to be growing in strength at home to Luton today. Arsenal, <laughs> we'll come on to talk about them. They appear to be growing in strength. Is there an argument, or is it too much to read into it off the back of one awful game midweek, that they might be fading just a little? Yeah, I think it's... I wouldn't read into that too much. I think it's, it's been a disappointing week for them. I think they'll look at the Manchester United game and, uh, in particular, in that first half, the way that they just cut through Manchester United, created so many opportunities. They just weren't clinical enough in front of goal. It was the Quanza mistake brilliant bit of magic from, from Bruno Fernandes that got Manchester United back into the game. So, of course, they'll be disappointed that they'll look at that as, as two points dropped. I think the, the performance against Atlanta was... It was just very uncharacteristic, just not like Liverpool at all. They, you know, they were out for, they were outdone tactically. Yes, Atlanta, I think you've got to praise them and say they performed really well and, and stopped Liverpool and, and were a real threat going forward. But that's just something I think they'll, they'll reflect on because we're probably back where we are. You know, Arsenal and Manchester City drew the week previous, Liverpool won, and we were all saying, oh, Liverpool have got the advantage now. Now it's just back to, OK, Liverpool have drew and both Manchester City and Arsenal have won. So I just think it's still so difficult to call, but it is so important that they respond now against Crystal Palace, which I think they will. I think if you go back to that Manchester United game, you, everybody at half times are saying Liverpool's been brilliant, they've blown them away, it's very difficult to see Man United getting back, and then all of a sudden it changes with that mistake. Yeah. Yeah. But you can't go from... You know, everybody saying they were excellent and then inside 15, 20 minutes later, the whole thing's changed. They've had a bad week, as we've spoken about there, but they will respond. Just, just one more on Liverpool before we move over to the Champions doors. From a defensive point of view, Thursday night, I mean, look at Skamaka's second goal. I mean, I mean, it had the freedom of Anfield. Yeah. How big a concern is that in terms of the, the number of chances that other teams like United a week ago are having against them? Yeah, it was a huge concern and I, I, was, I was watching the game and I saw the goals that they were giving them away and the opportunities. I mean, you can talk about the other end of the, the field where you're thinking they should be taking chances, but I've always looked and thought that's a, that's a place that they've improved on. They've looked far from it. I mean, the mistake last week, it can happen. One slight pass, Bruno then puts a the ball in the back of the net. But your mindset at this time in, in the season is concentration. Can we get over the line? Scrutiny, one mistake can cost you. But that defending in midweek, it blew my mind. It really did. The guys have just, everyone's touched on it there. Give credit to Atalanta. Mm, yeah. But you as a unit, a defensive unit, you can't lose your structure, you can't lose your shape. And they were all over the place. I mean, Skamaka's second goal, I mean, it's something you'd see in Sunday League. Mm. It, it, there was no one, no one even near him. What do you do when you're defending your mark? Where's your player? I mean, it, it, it was a surprise for me. I, it was a slight blip, but I also look at the games where they've got over the lines. You look at Sheffield United the Saturday of last week, Si. Said they were very fortunate to win that game. And it's that other end of the field where you go, how do we break yeah. teams down? How do we keep our composure in front of goal? And we're not seeing that from Liverpool at this moment in time. What did you say? 87 chances, Merce. 87 shots in that, three fixtures. That's ridiculous because them strikers, and we've talked about Nunes being rash in front of goal. You have to be calm. That's why they get paid all the money. Your best players have to be calm in front of goal and take these chances because defensively you make one blip, which Kwanzaa did last week, and you get punished. But they should have been out of sight against Manchester United. And with Boydie, I see them beating Crystal Palace tomorrow quite comfortably. However, I could be wrong because in recent weeks, Liverpool haven't been good enough. They're doing just enough, but they got caught on Thursday. And Mercy mentioned Jota. He, he returned to training this week, so not far away from a return when he featured in the Match Day squad tomorrow. We will find out. It is on Super Sunday. Let's turn things... Over now to the champions. They go first, as I mentioned, this weekend. They're at home to 
Luton Town later today, and we'll talk about Luton and a relegation fight a little bit later. But, Merce, in, in terms, I call them thoroughbreds at the start, they know this particular bit of the course, the run-in, better than any team in the Premier League right now. So where do you see Manchester City right now in, ter in terms of form and potential hurdles along the way in terms of pitfalls? It's so different now. This last seven games, it is so different. You've seen it in the Championship. Mm. You know, you've seen Leicester, you've seen Leeds, you've seen Ipswich, the way you drop points. It gets, it's different now. It's different. Every game is a hard game. Even today, Luton at home, you know, they're going to have one eye on Real Madrid. There's no question about that. You know, you end up starting <coughs> this game slowly. The <coughs> clock starts ticking down very quickly. It's weird how it works towards the end of the season, you know. And I, I, it's just how they manage it. I've, I still think, I still think it's going to be Arsenal or Liverpool. I still yeah. do. It's in their hands. Yeah. It's out of Man City's hands. You know, Arsenal and, Arsenal and Liverpool go, go perfect from now to the end of the season. Man City can't do anything about it. Cannot do anything. It's still out of their hands. Until, until it's in their hands, for me, they've got to keep on going and going. I, I still think it's, it's Arsenal and Liverpool. Well, let's have a look at the top three remaining yeah. fixtures, as, as we do every week. And you, you look at top six sides that the three teams are going to be facing. Here it comes. There it is. Um, for Arthur, they've got, well, they've got Aston Villa tomorrow. Uh, they've got Tottenham away as well. Um, they've got Manchester United away on the penultimate game of the season. For Liverpool, well, they've still got Tottenham and Aston Villa to face, one at home, one away. For Man City, Merce, well, in terms of top six sides, it's Tottenham away on that penultimate game of the season. Oh. If you're looking at run-ins, you want to be in Pep Guardiola's shoes right now, don't you? You do, but, but even if they win all six, if one of the other two go perfect, they, mm. they haven't won the league. You know, there's not a lot of games left. You know, you, you look, you know, they're telling me Liverpool, you know, we say Liverpool are going to win tomorrow. If they win tomorrow, I expect them to beat Fulham. I expect them to beat Everton. You know, I know Everton will be our game. I expect them to go and beat West Ham. You know, I expect them to beat Tottenham. You know, then you're talking... Tottenham talk will have a big scene at all. But then you're, you're talking there's play. two football matches to go. Mm. You know, forget the other four then. It's two football matches. It's, you know, I... I I still think Liverpool or Arsenal, I think one of them two will go. I, I, I still think there's a lot, a lot to play for it. I wouldn't... Man City have got the fixtures, but I wouldn't want to be Man City. I wouldn't, because I can win every game and still not win the league. And let's be honest, these two teams, you know, Arsenal come back from their winter break and went, what was it, nine on... They won yeah. nine, or mm. nine out of ten. You know, they can do it. You know, they've got Chelsea at home. I know Chelsea are a bag of <coughs> revels. You, you don't know what you're going to get. You know, the, <laughs> we haven't the, heard the revels the, for a while. The Tottenham, back. <laughs> the Tottenham game, I'm quite confident with Arsenal on mm. the Tottenham game. I think it'll be an end-to-end -end football match. And I just think Arsenal are stronger in midfield. And I think they win that game. Man United, the way Man United, you see him against Liverpool. You know, Klopp said Arsenal will beat these if they mm. play like that. And if Everton are safe... It, 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 you know, without being horrible, it's an absolute give me. A give me. Yeah. I mean, I, I think when you look at Arsenal this year, they're a total different team. Um, mm. You know, they've scored the most goals, they've conceded the less goals in the league. They are a total different team from where they were last season. They're stronger all over the pitch. That you know, the, the stats point to that. Um, you, you know, I look at the the, the, the Tottenham uh, games against the three of them are going to. Liverpool's the only one that's got Tottenham at home. Yes, they've got a hard game against Aston Villa, but you look at Liverpool. And, you, you know, the other two are still in the Champions League as well. And mm -hmm. you can say it doesn't have it. But if Arsenal have to find a way to get past Bayern Munich, if Manchester City have to find a way to get past, then all of a sudden that's midweek games for it. And I know they've got the squad for it. But you then think, well, semi-finals of the Champions League, what a chance of winning the Champions League. The Premier League's still there, yes, as well. But, I mean, you, it's going to be a <coughs> difficult ask for Liverpool to overturn yeah. um, their um, game. But, you know, you look at Liverpool and, yeah, they've had a bad week. But they've got players that can, you know, win games of football. 